recording. And uh, it will be posted on, on YouTube and we'll, uh, we'll link um, uh, when that's uh, available. So um, we are trying to um, do something fairly early US time today with the hope that it would catch uh, people in, in Europe and so on, different time zones. Um, we uh, will uh, post the, the recording, as I said, and uh, uh, minutes will go up um, on the community meetings page, which is, uh, has been linked in, in Slack and on the um, uh, mailing list and so on. Um, what we're going to try and do with these meetings is every, uh, every month start off with a bit of a kind of a show and tell session uh, where we can have someone present some kind of uh, tool or workflow or, or project that um, is built around singularity um, or uh, uses it in some way um, as, a, as a means to kind of open this meeting up a bit more to, to users and, and present things which aren't just kind of development talk, but um, hopefully can help engage uh, the community a bit further. We're going to have um, Adrian uh, present shortly on a, on a VS Code extension, and then after that we'll go over um, the uh, recent security releases, the 3.8 release. Um, Adam will uh, talk a bit more in depth about um, work he's doing on, on the SIF code for the Singularity image format. Um, and then we want to take a look at the, the roadmap today. Um, we'll try and move quite uh, swiftly so that there's there's time at the end for uh, any other questions on, on things off the agenda. Uh, so with that, I'm going to stop sharing and invite uh, Adrian to uh, share his screen and uh, show us the exciting stuff he's been working on. Sweet, thanks. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, thanks. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, so I've got a uh, VS Code window open here. Uh, just to let you know, I am running on a, a remote Linux system right now that does have Singularity installed because there are a few little differences between running on Linux versus running on Mac or even a Windows machine with regards to this extension. So <clears throat> I've got the extension loaded up here on the side, and you'll see it reports out my current remote builds from the cloud services. Uh, from this, you can pull the image, go right to the library, view the output, or even delete the build. But before I get into those, I'm actually just going to show submitting a build and validating a definition file. So in this folder, I've just got a simple node definition file here. Um, so we're just going to drop out a, it's got a little bit of syntax hiding, highlighting here as well. So you can see it highlights the major sections and gives a bit of other, you know, highlighting just on the sort of standard languages and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm going to make this an invalid definition file first, and then I'm going to just open up the con command palette. And there's two options here, submit build and validate the def file. So we'll just do the first one here. At the bottom, you'll see it reports back that it's invalid because I've got setup not spelled correctly. So I will, um, okay, I just, sorry, just seeing your message here. Yep, I will make my, let's see if we can make this a bit bigger here. So hopefully. It's a bit better for everybody. Resize some windows. All right. Is that good to see? Let's just sorry. Okay, perfect. All right. So we validated the def, the def file. It came back as now that it, or actually we have revalidated. So let's go ahead and do that just to make sure. So now it reports back that it's a valid definition file. And then what we're going to do is just submit it off to the remote builder. So opening the command palette. It, command palette in VS Code again. There's a submit build option and there are uh, shortcut keys as well. <clears throat> so now it's gonna ask where I wanna store the, the build. So, and it also does do a validation rate on that as well. Make sure you're not submitting invalid. So I'm gonna send it to oops, my path here and we'll call this node and express because it's just a basic node app that just bootstraps a HTTP server. You can also add tags here if you want. And then once we hit enter, it'll submit the build off to the builder, open up the output panel and show the live output logs. As you can see, 
It's kind of booting along there. Doesn't take too long on this one. Give that a minute. There it goes, uploading. And then it reports back the library path as well. So you can directly access it from here by clicking the link. It tells you that it completed at your times. And then if I go back to the extension, you'll see now here, there's my new remote build. So I'll close this definition file and I'll clear the output just so that we can show some of the other features. If I click on the actual um, entity here, it will bring me back my submitted def file. So exactly what I submitted to the remote builder. This is just a read only, so you can't actually modify it, but you can simply you know, copy it and make a new def file if you wanna make some modifications and try it again. You can then click this icon to view the output. So this will bring back that output stream, but bring it all into one log file. So again, you can dissect any of the information that was output. And then if you right click on the instance, you'll get again, the two or another two options, pull image and go to library. So I'll just click go to libraries to see, it'll just open up my browser, bring me right over to the cloud where I can, as an owner logged in, I can add a tag, get the pull command, sign the image, all those kinds of similar cloud services. And then next, what we're gonna do is we're going to pull the file and because you can actually, yeah, we can run this directly. So by right clicking pull, it gives me this prompt to save the definition file. So I'll just call it node.sif. Okay, it'll start pulling the image as you can see here in the output. Same sort of, it runs singularity on it and then transfers over to a terminal window where you'll see that it actually has the SIF on my file system. And I can singularity instance start SIF node. And so now I'm actually running the container and I'm, so it's booted up the node application and I'll just open up a new terminal here and just do a simple curl to action. I think I did it on 3000. Well, you know what, let's take a look. I built that to run on port 4000. So I'll run that. And there is our output message from that container running node. So that's pretty much the extension in a nutshell. Um, the only thing is there's a configuration that you have to go to the cloud services and get an API key and input it into the configuration side in order for this to all work. And then that would then you're off to the races, then it's good to go. And then, yeah, if I wanted to delete the build, I can do that here. And that's, there is the VS Code extension. That's a very fast overview. <laughs> so I guess, I don't know, DT, do we want to maybe take questions or do you just want to move on? What's you think the best? I guess case. my the obvious question, Adrian, is uh, how can I get hold of this? How do you? Yeah, so before? I haven't I haven't actually submitted it to the VS Code Marketplace yes yet, but I will probably do that this weekend or even later today, um, just to get it out there if if that's what people are interested in. Um, you know, I wasn't sure how this would be perceived, but I'll definitely publish it today or tomorrow for sure. And it would just be, I think, under Singularity Remote Builder, and that's how you'd be able to find it. I'll post a link in, in Slack when all that's uh, done and ready. Cool. Um, and I, and just for the recording, I did. We did get a tweet earlier on about this if it would run in uh, Gitpod. Um, I knew that was one question, and I did test it there, and it did work. So it does work in Gitpod as well. So that's kind of cool. Great. Um, yeah. Does anyone have any questions uh, for Adrian about this? Okay, I uh, guess we'll move along. Thanks okay. very much. No problem. And that was a great demo to, to kick things off. If anyone who's here or is uh, uh, watching this as uh, a recording later is interested in, in sharing anything in these meetings, please do reach out to us um, in Slack on the mailing list or directly um, and let us know. Um, we have lined up um, for future calls, um, a uh, developer of a, um, a, an alternative sort of library registry, open source implementation. Um, and that's gonna happen in um, September. Um, I have a presentation of a little sort of container scanning security tool 
um, that wraps around uh, the Clara container scanner, which um, I, I will present in the future. But if anyone would like to take the uh, August slot or any uh, future slots, let us know and uh, we, we'd love to, to hear from you. I, I have a question about VS Code in general. Go ahead, Dave. Okay. So, so do you do this, Adrian, and anybody else use that for your, for your Go? language uh, as well uh, go you know for singularity yes. development not just for the for SIF development yes I think um, the majority of singularity development probably happens in in VS code okay. um, the environment is is very nice uh, for for go um, and uh, one of the one of the nice benefits is actually um, you can remote to a different machine so you can from your laptop be it Mac, Windows or, or Linux, remote into a um, Linux box wherever and um, all the kind of code completion and everything like that works. <clears throat> so it, it, it kind of appears locally, but it's actually working on the remote host. For something like Singularity, that's particularly nice um, for say like me when I'm trying to um, troubleshoot an issue which is on a specific distribution which is working in a remote VM or something it's, it's very handy so um, uh, I think we all tend to tend to use VS code yeah just to like to add to that yeah I was using my VS code exactly what, what uh, Dave was saying there uh, on a remote Linux machine with singularity installed and I didn't show that when you run this extension on say just Mac itself where singularity is not on the host, it doesn't allow you to pull the container because that's directly running a, a singularity command in the a terminal basically. So yeah, it, that was what I was sort of demonstrating in that. And yeah, I use it for, for Go as well in the on a remote dev system. Okay, uh, any anything else? Right. Um, so next, I want to give a, a quick kind of update about the kind of releases and, and recent development work. So uh, to begin with, um, <clears throat> about uh, just over a month ago, there was the security release of, of Singularity 3.7.4. Now, this one is something uh, that was done in coordination with the HPCNG uh, group. Um, so thanks uh, to you, Dave, for your involvement there and, and others. Um, basically, Scilabs found um, that um, the library handling code incorrectly um, kind of <laughs> tried to retrieve um, images from the default endpoint when you were running um, an action, a run, shell, or exec. So that if you configured a, a custom remote endpoint, so um, this mostly applies to actually uh, sort of Scilabs customers who run Singularity Enterprise, but also potentially to people running S registry or, or similar locally uh, as an open source library. If you configured a remote endpoint to pull library images from, from that place, it wasn't working uh, for those action commands. And um, the upshot of this is that if you have a malicious uh, person, they might be able to uh, kind of find out that on your intended local um, library service, um, you have a, a particular container at a path and then try and replicate that path on the um, public cloud.scilabs.io, but with a malicious image there. And uh, then you would inadvertently pull that malicious image. Uh, so that was fixed in uh, 3.7.4. And the release of 3.7.4 um, that's posted at the Scilab Singularity GitHub page is identical to the one that is at the HPC and G Singularity page. And uh, we kind of note that there. Any questions on, on, on this security release? Okay, and then uh, moving forward, scrolling up to the top here, um, we released Singularity CE 3.8.0. Um, 
the, the same day. And this is the first of the Singularity C releases from, from the fork. So um, this 3.8.0 uh, isn't necessarily exactly the same as what's at HPCNG, uh, though obviously um, at, at this point, there's very little time or, or um, reason for, for them to have differentiated. Singularity 3.8 um, generally introduced uh, uh, features such as um, the ability to manage overlays more easily by an overlay command. Uh, you can also uh, permit named users or groups to use certain uh, CNI network configurations. Previously, only root could apply a CNI network configuration, but now a user uh, can be permitted to apply a root managed configuration. The build command now allows you to um, use a GPU via NV or Rockham and bind uh, paths into the build um, if it, that's required. Um, obviously, um, this makes uh, builds potentially um, specific to the kind of host. So we generally advise you to kind of try and avoid these if possible, <clears throat> particularly um, with the GPU options. Um, a lot of software will build using uh, what are called the CUDA stub libraries, where you don't require the actual um, CUDA libraries, but there are just kind of stubs there. Um, the NV flag being available in a build is a, is a way to work around software that, that doesn't support that, um, which really does need a GPU at build time. Um, you can now, uh, when you're pulling or working with a library URL, include a host name that's mainly relevant for people with uh, their own S registry or Singularity Enterprise and so on. And uh, thanks to some work from a contributor, Singularity is now relocatable for unprivileged installations only. So if you build Singularity without the set UID, and uh, that's set at build time, you will be able to move the installation tree into a different place and it will, will still work. We have um, some different bug fixes. Something to, to point out is that um, um, you can now push SIF images using ORAS to Harbor and GitLab. They um, had a slightly uh, sort of wonky implementation of the ORAS standard, depending on uh, where you read that standard. Um, and we, we now work around that so that um, uh, you, can, you can push to those repositories. Um, the test uh, development environment for anyone who's working on, on the code has has changed a little so that it's cleaned up and make test runs limited unit and integration tests that don't require um, interaction with docker hub um, whereas make test all runs the full uh, test suite and because of docker's limits on um, how many pools you can do and things this does now require uh, that you set a, a Docker Hub username and, and password for the test suite to, to complete. Um, what we do make sure is that in the CI, um, this will, will run so that if you are, are working on the code and uh, you don't have um, a, a Docker Hub account, which is um, paid and has no limits, or maybe you're just on a free one and you don't want to consume your, your pool limits, if you submit a PR, and it will run uh, through the full end-to-end -end suite um, and you, you won't have to worry about doing this locally. Uh, any questions on, on the 3.8 Singularity CE release? Okay. Um, just generally now commenting on, on what's been going on, on on the kind of development side of things. If we go over and, and we look at uh, the, the pull requests, which have, have gone into um, the master branch recently, you'll see a lot of stuff, which is essentially uh, kind of trying to clean up the code. And because we're a relatively small group of core developers working uh, in this project, we, we tend to go in cycles really, where after um, 
the release of a, a new version like 3.8. Um, before we get started on features for the next version, we try and go back in and do some cleanup. Adam has been doing various things here, uh, probably the bulk of the work. Um, the Mac uh, or Darwin support, which was uh, kind of deprecated some time ago, uh, the code has been removed, so that there's less um, to, to maintain there. Uh, you see that there's various ongoing uh, dependency updates and CI improvements and kind of chasing the latest uh, Go versions and, and making sure all of that stuff works correctly. Um, this kind of cleanup has been, been going on a bit. And um, what I want to do uh, now is give uh, Adam the uh, opportunity to talk a bit more about um, some specifics in there, um, the work he's been doing towards getting a SIF v2 uh, module, which tidies up um, the SIF uh, singularity image format code and um, lets us uh, move forward from there. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Uh, maybe I will pull up a uh, window here so I can talk to you uh, if I can find it. All right, so um, yeah, so I guess just to take a step back, um, and, and, you know, how we got here and, and, and why we were starting down this path, um, really started with a security advisory. So um, I just go into it here. Um, you'll see uh, we, we had been using, and uh, well, maybe to take two steps back here. So um, this from a code level is a module that's imported into Singularity. So, um, you know, this, although it does expose a uh, binary itself, most of our users in, in the Singularity community do not use, um, you know, SIF directly. They're using it through Singularity. Um, but in terms of code, the, the code's actually separate in its own module with its own versions and, um, you know, its own bugs and in this case, its own security um, issues as well. So um, this was an interesting issue where um, we had been using, uh, reusing someone else's code to generate UUIDs. So uh, UUID is a unique, uh, universally unique identifier. And um, what's, you know, the, the the goal of having UUID is that every time you generate one, you get something that, that is actually unique. Um, unfortunately, the module we had been using, which is this um, github.com slash satori slash go.uuid, um, hadn't been maintained for quite some time, and there were actually known issues with it. So um, this had been forked by others um, to, to fix this issue. But the upshot of it is, um, you know, when you're uh, generating UUID with this library, with the latest tagged version of this library, um, there actually wouldn't be a lot of randomness in it. And because of that, there's there's quite a high probability that you would get collisions in that unique ID space. Um, this isn't actually a security issue for Singularity in the way that it uses SIF. So um, we don't rely on um, those identifiers being unique for any kind of security um, property or principle within Singularity. But because this is a separate module and um, there are other users of it, uh, you know, there's the potential that um, one of those other tools could be affected by this. So for that reason, we chose to um, do the normal responsible disclosure process for, um, for, the, for this module and uh, release a fix. Um, unfortunately, uh, the way Go modules work, um, when you make a change, if it's a breaking change, you have to bump a major version. Um, in order to fix this, we were able to work around it without making a breaking change. Um, but because this type um, the, from this library, satori.co.uuid, is used in our public API for the SIF module, um, actually replacing this module is a breaking change. So uh, that sort of started us down the path of, okay, if we're gonna go from a version one to a version two, um, that's something you don't do very often. That's, um, you know, for consumers of the, this module, that's, um, that, that's going to mean they might have to change their code. So that's quite annoying. Um, so while we're, you know, doing that version one to two jump, um, we thought it'd be worthwhile to take a look around and um, improve the API and, and solve some of the pain points that we, we've seen over the years uh, with SIF. Um, this module was written you know, right at the start of uh, when Scilabs became a thing um, by a good friend of mine, Yana Cote. Um, 
and uh, you know, it, it, it predated a lot of things even in Go. It predated modules, it predated really strong um, semantic versioning that, that it kind of being defined in Go uh, and tied to modules and versions. So in any case, um, quickly to, to go over the changes uh, and maybe let me, so I've been tagging everything in the issues uh, with V2 that are gonna be breaking changes. Um, this first one here obviously replaced that broken package. Um, and then the rest of them here, these are all quite low level APIs. Um, I wouldn't expect you, know, you to uh, care about this as a Singularity user. Um, you, you shouldn't have to worry about this at all. Nothing's going to change in the user interface. But if you are a developer who's working with SIF modules or SIF images directly in Go code of your own, and you're leveraging this module, um, it might be worth taking a look uh, just to get a heads up on what some of those breaking changes are going to look like. Um, and uh, so I'm not going to go into depth on um, any of these changes here. Um, if you do have specific questions, I'd be happy to answer them. And um, one last thing before, uh, before I give up the talking stick here, I'll just mention that um, the way development is happening uh, is um, version two is being developed in master now. There is a V1 branch, uh, which is where the, the current stable version, which is still version one, uh, will be maintained um, for um, probably quite some time. Um, but if you want to check out V2 and, and see the latest of it, of course, it's still quite in flux. As you can see, a lot of these issues are still open. Um, you know, feel, please feel free to check out the master branch and um, report any issues or, uh, or drop us a note in Slack. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's about all I wanted to cover. Uh, thanks for the time. And if anyone has any questions, be happy to, uh, to answer them. Okay, over to you then, Dave. Okay. Um, what I wanted to kind of spend a little bit of time on now before we get to kind of open uh, discussion is to to look at the the roadmap. Um, so um, we have uh, now our uh, Singularity CE community repository. And uh, in here, we've got the meetings document I've brought up and we've got a roadmap file. Um, and we've got this kind of base readme, which is um, giving the information about our meetings, um, where you can find the roadmap, um, links to GitHub issues and so on. Uh, these documents are all uh, editable uh, by following the collaborate on HackMD button. Uh, that will take you into HackMD, which is kind of a, a real time um, a markdown editor and we'll sync uh, kind of changes that, that get made um, into this uh, uh, GitHub repository so that the changes are tracked and we have kind of uh, a version of record here. Um, we definitely encourage you to kind of jump in here and, and edit and suggest things on, on any of these documents uh, that you'd like to. Um, anyway, so if I uh, jump into the roadmap, um, Last time uh, we kind of met for our initial uh, meeting, I, I kind of went through this a, a little bit. The roadmap gives a bit of background and it talks about our development cycle where we're aiming that Singularity CE continues to have a six month release cycle um, for uh, going from you know, 3.8 to 3.9 and, and, and so on. Um, we're kind of pointing out uh, disclosing here that yes, we do have Singularity Pro, uh, which uh, Scilabs releases commercially uh, from Singularity CE. And um, this does have some impact on our decisions around release timelines and roadmap. Uh, so we um, are kind of uh, being stewards of this roadmap, but what we'd, um, we'd like is to, to kind of have a situation where um, you know, the, the, the things that Scilabs decide to do in a particular version are, are really what we specifically need um, for uh, customers of Pro and, and looking forward. And then um, the, the, the remaining kind of features in um, new versions 
are, are driven by what uh, um, the, the community of users is uh, thinking would be good to have, or better still, uh, can contribute uh, in terms of code and, and pull requests. <clears throat> so um, right now we have um, a list of features which have been kind of tentatively tagged as, as suitable for a 3.x, be that 3.9 or so on. And then um, features which would be um, probably for a, a 4.0 release because um, they might involve uh, breaking the, the, the CLI a little bit, or they have kind of broad scope in terms of implementation reaching across the code type of things. And we've got a nice to have here um, where there are, you know, potential ideas for things which may or may not be um, useful. And we've had some um, contribution here um, from, from Vanessa um, on, on some ideas down, down at the bottom. Um, so what we're trying to do is get kind of general input on features people would uh, think are nice here. And then um, as we kind of decide what needs to go into to releases, um, map these across in, into milestones. So if I open up the, the 3.9, which would be um, in November by our uh, roadmap release cycle, we have two things uh, currently kind of tagged here, um, sort of chunky changes to the code. The, the first one is support for C groups V2. Um, if you're not aware, um, there's a, a version two of, of Linux C groups, which is how you can impose kind of resource limits monitoring on, on processes. Um, the version two changes the structure of the C groups hierarchy. So um, you kind of interact with C groups through um, these special files and um, the, the structure of those has changed. Uh, therefore, um, running on a system which is using C groups v2 requires changes to how um, you interact with those files to, to kind of configure C groups and, uh, and look at them. Um, the second thing on here is the um, feature carried over, um, which was intended for 3.8, but didn't happen. This one is to um, move more towards using NVIDIA's upstream um, tooling um, to uh, set up NVIDIA CUDA GPUs in the container so that we can support things like masking GPUs, um, MIG, these virtual devices, in the, in the same way as people are familiar with um, using the NVIDIA Docker runtime or um, hooks which are used by other OCI uh, runtimes. So these are kind of two chunky things that uh, Scilabs definitely um, wants, wants to do. Um, Adam is obviously going to be pursuing the, the SIF work he's mentioned. Um, and then we've got a, a, a bunch of other kind of 3.x um, features here. And um, Really, what we're what we're looking for is um, any kind of input um, from the, the community of users as to or what what they think would be nice to see in in a three point nine, and we can get that on the roadmap and a, a, a sign up to the milestone. Um, if if we will have the development time to do it, we'll we'll tag it onto the milestone uh, happily. Um, if we don't really think we have the uh, ability to, to spend the time on the code, then it would be something which would be open for uh, anyone to say that they'd uh, have a go at uh, creating a PR for. Um, so I'd en encourage anyone to, to kind of look at this document um, up at the top. You can follow the, the HackMD button to add things or comment on things. You can um, indicate support of a feature by commenting or or mentioning it in, in Slack or, or on the mailing list, anything like that. Um, we, we're really keen to have uh, people um, 
kind of add to this. Should mention that um, these are generally kind of uh, kind of larger changes, um, the sort of bug fix type issues. Um, and probably uh, we will uh, kind of round those up from from GitHub issues. Um, they don't necessarily have to come in on, on the roadmap. This is more for things which need a, a bit of thought and and uh, prioritization, maybe a bit of planning and, and kind of design and discussion uh, around them before before the work happens. Um, so I, I guess with that, I'd like to to kind of open it up and ask uh, whether anyone has any uh, specific thoughts on on what they'd like to see in in 3.9 any any uh, suggestions more generally or uh, anything like that see my favorite my favorite wish item is i don't see on the list and that is making completely unprivileged which means something like using uh, fuse squash fs and fuse overlay fs so that you don't need the the privilege mode right so um that's um definitely invite you to to add that dave um my my thought on that was um that that it was going to be more likely that that would appear on the hpcng um mm -hmm. roadmap uh given your your kind of um guiding the the project there um and obviously uh, cedric is is involved um has been involved heavily on on the, the overlay uh stuff um but uh, certainly i mean we can we can track that here and we can look at look at the need i will say that um from from our point of view um looking at it from um where this goes out to um, pro and, and and so on and and deployments in large hpc centers most are still uh quite kind of conservative on the the os that's being run and and this type of stuff so um this is is definitely a topic where it, it would be nice to to kind of work up things like this but i'm i'm not sure how much immediate use it would have but yeah, i can definitely argue that it's good to have features in well in advance of of kind of the broad uptake of them i'm seeing lots of hpc sites that are running centos 7 but um i don't know if you if you, if you see that that much but so um yeah i i would i'll, I'll make it as a as a proposed change for 4.0 just to track it anyway so in case that in case you know other users of singularity ce come and say yeah yeah i'd like to see that too you know then you'll it, that will uh catch their eye okay um it's, it's a probably, good qu question right on that it, would you see that being in a 3x or in a 4 yeah i know you said 4 there but it's um you see that being a, a kind of breaking change no it doesn't have to be a breaking change it's just that i don't think it's going to get done in the time frame Oh. So I could put it in 3x just because it could it wouldn't be a breaking change, but um, yeah. Yeah, I don't think we've um, yet to find uh, when we're going, planning to do a 3x to 4x transition either. So although uh, so there might be a 3 9, 10, it's, saying, yes. yeah, I, I, I would keep the door open for that. So yeah, in okay. terms of 3x features, if, if you think that could be added in a non-breaking way, um, it might be appropriate for that section. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, we, we've we've got that that kind of note there. Um, so, and any other kind of thoughts um, from from anyone kind of looking through this? Okay. Well, what we're we're going to do is um, kind of keep this open, and we're now going to start trying to fill out the the milestones for three point nine, and we'll we'll kind of bring in the larger roadmap items we we think we can do in the, this time span, and we'll also um, start capturing uh, smaller issues um, uh, in in this one. Uh, but the the target for three point nine is 
is November uh, 23rd. Um, so that's when we're, we're hoping for that. Um, 381, uh, kind of patch release for 3.8. Um, there's a milestone for it. Uh, we haven't really had um, any kind of major um, issues yet reported against uh, 3.8.0. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, um, obviously, if we have kind of an accumulation of, of minor issues or um, something which is really getting in the way of people, we will um, make sure that uh, a 381 release happens. Okay. Okay. So um, what we'd like to do now then is, is basically kind of open the floor and uh, if there's any other topics that uh, people want to bring up, then uh, we, can, we can dive into those. So um, let's uh, see if, if anyone has anything. Yeah, I'd like to bring up uh, cooperation between the projects. Um, in particular, just to point out that we uh, at, at HPCNG have have been very deliberately um, looking at every pull request merged um, in, in Singularity CE and considering whether or not to port them back to, to Singularity. And um, we have had some bug fixes, some important bug fixes, I think, in past since 3.8. Uh, let me say 3.8.0. Was almost the same, almost identical, except there was a bug fix that uh, Cedric wanted to do differently than the, than went into this the, the Singularity CE. So um, should look at that. What I would like to encourage you guys to do the same in the other direction to to watch anything uh, merged into. HPC and G to see whether or not it's something uh, it's important to, to fix. So I know there has been at least one important bug fix. I, I'm 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 looking to push towards a fairly early 381 because it's a really important bug fix for my community anyway. Um, yeah, that is, that is to do with um, uh, uh, file descriptor getting the, the the file descriptor to the to the container is getting closed by garbage collection. Uh, so if there's enough, if, uh, it was it was seen with the dash dash nv option where there are all these bind mounts happening, causing more garbage collection. So. Yeah. So um, on on that particular issue, Dave. So the what what we chose to do was disable garbage collection on the, the starter process um, in um, the the CE code. And, and this is something which actually came out of a report from, um, from a pro install uh, where someone is running kind of uh, hundreds of thousands or, or millions of container runs you know, a day. Um, and they, they're kind of occasionally hitting this. Um, the, uh, we, we're keeping in the, the the change, which is a bit different with this uh, disabling of the of the GC for now. Um, um, but we're we're aware of of the the kind of different approach that has been been taken, and we'll we'll have a look at that. Um, that's I'm I'm talking about one that's been since three eight zero. So that one went into our three eight zero. Cedric had a different fix than than disabling the garbage collection. So since then. In fact, I'm not sure that the garbage collection in this case is in the starter process. I think it's not. So watch, look for that, look for that merge. Yeah, we'll 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 take a look. Another fix, another fix. Uh, yeah. Um, so so we're definitely kind of tracking the those uh, those fixes and uh, and looking at them. Um, I I will say that um, it's it's going to be the case that. Um, um, you know, things things will drift a bit, and there will be some different approaches. We might also see that um, actually there are um, uh, there's a bit different prioritization between the, the forks as well. So um, the uh, and you mentioned kind of the your your community who's using um, you know CVMFS and, and and things like that. If if that community is 
is following the HPCNG side of the fork, um, then um, and everyone's uh, using that. Obviously, we want to bring the fixes in, but the, the priorities might kind of differ slightly. But uh, we're definitely monitoring the the um, the the PRs that uh, mm -hmm. appear and and go in on. Good. And HP, HPC, a lot of HPC systems are beginning to get CDMFS as well. So, uh, so they're, I'm sure some of your pro customers are also dealing with the same issues. Um, yeah, to, to our knowledge, we, we don't have anyone in pro using CVMFS yet, but we do have people using uh, other uh, file systems, which mm -hmm. are, are kind of um, a little less common than the, the kind of NFS luster GPFS kind of trio. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, and, and anything else? Yeah, another another issue that I wanted to make for the recording is I think everybody on this call already knows this answer, but to 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 give a, a more complete explanation for why there is a fork because it is you know it causes a lot of extra work for each project having to port over things that that are relevant. It's causing quite a bit of extra work and. And uh, in the first, I watched the, the recording of the first community call, and it was, I, in my opinion, it was not a very well explained there. It was just, uh, was just saying basically, we need, a, we need a, a vibrant community, but to me that, that having two separate communities is, makes, interferes with that, with that goal. So I wonder if, if you can, for, for, the, for the recording, give a better, give, a, give something that may, People might understand a little better about why why there is a fork. Um, so, I mean, from my point of view, um, the, the explanation we we've given, though it might not be um, very satisfying to to some, is is really kind of what's behind it. We felt that um, uh, there potentially would be a kind of more uh, interaction with a community of, of users and, and developers. Um, if a fork took place that, uh, that uh, kind of reinvigorated things. Um, we had been a part of the, the HPCNG product through our contributions to Singularity uh, for about a year, but it wasn't necessarily um, clear to us um, how the organization was structured and, and the, the kind of way in which um, projects would interact with the, the broader organization. And um, I, I think really we, we are now at the point where we, 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 we don't really want to focus on, on why the fork happened, okay? Um, because uh, we, we do have a fork. Um, we have a somewhat invigorated community. We have had um, uh, kind of more traffic uh, between the, the, the two Slack groups on, on each side of the fork and the mailing list and so on than I, I, I've seen for a while. And we've got things now like this meeting where we're recording it and, and posting it openly. We'll have our minutes out in the open. Um, and uh, we've got a roadmap up there. And, and this type of stuff I'm, I'm sure is going on on the HPCNG side of the project. I know you, uh, Dave, have been kind of involved in kind of steering things and, and new people have been coming in, involved on that side. And so, so the kind of outcome is that um, there is a bit more um, uh, kind of uh, life in, in, in the products now. And I, I, I honestly don't think we're going to be able to um, kind of satisfy everyone by giving um, kind of lengthy uh, descriptions, looking for specific reasons or, or kind of triggers that that led to led to the fork. Um, um, and I, my my kind of view is that really going down that road is is just a way to to kind of stir up. Um, ill feeling and and we'd like to kind of look positive and look forward but I'd ask um, uh, Jason um, who's on on the call if, if he wants to to say anything 
No, that was that was a good synopsis, DT. And, and this really isn't the venue for this. This has been discussed multiple times already. And you know, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. But I do, I do see, uh, I, I do think to DT's point, you're seeing much more uh, invigoration, you know, from uh, what we saw previously, and that was one of the intents and one of the reasons. So I think Dave summed it up quite well. So I guess I agree by forcing forcing a crisis that it, it causes more people people to pay more attention, but it's it's still uh, still a lot of people are really confused by it. Uh, we got that questions in the in the uh, HPC and G singularity community meeting as well. So now which one am I supposed to use? You know, people are very confused. So I uh, <clears throat> wanted to give you the opportunity to say something publicly to, to help uh, explain it. Um, um, what what I would say about the kind of messages about confusion, we, we know that that's an issue. Um, we're trying to, um, you know, post this uh, recording publicly, have the minutes publicly, the roadmap publicly, and, and kind of uh, um, so we're we're going if Dave if if the HPCNG is similarly kind of um, posting um, the the minutes of discussions and roadmaps and stuff I'd I'd love to invite you to to kind of um, post uh, where those things are or mention where they are so that people who are kind of watching this and and wondering what what the difference is can can find those and and kind. Of, uh, look uh, themselves and, and see what the differences are in roadmaps and things as, as we yeah, go. That has, that has been done. We're not, not taking recordings, but we are taking notes and and posting those. It's been uh, posted on the on the mailing list where to find them. So. Okay, cool. We'll, uh, we'll uh, take a look at that uh, as well. So I'd like to also say that there's 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 still hope that at some point that the two communities might come back together. Would you agree with that? Um, I think that uh, um, there there could be a chance. There's always a chance of that in, in forks. It it depends how um, uh, things go, both organizationally and and technically, right? So. Um, it depends whether um, um, there are differences in kind of technical features uh, each side wants to do, and it depends on on the the organizational structures and, and whether it's kind of compatible with the the way the the different sides want to work. I just want to say too, like to focus on the positive here. Um, there's a lot of metrics you can look at about what's happened since the fork. Um, the amount of engagement that has happened in both slacks, if you compare that to pre fork is way, way up. Um, the pace of code change the you know, the features going in the bug fixes going in the number of people looking at them doing reviews. Um, would, when we, you know, our guiding principle, when we went into this was what's good for the project and it was, you know, we need community engagement. Um, all of the metrics you can define for that I think are up across the board. Um, I don't disagree with you, David. Some of that is due to, you know, it's kind of that um, that crisis response. But um, I think we're a ways out from that now. And actually, uh, we're seeing that sustained. We're not seeing that drop off. So um, I tend to take a really positive view on things. But um, I, I, I really do think that, you know, even just from a technical point of view, if you're to focus on, um, you know, real metrics that you can measure, uh, you'll see that there's more engagement, way more engagement on both sides of the fork right now. So um, I personally believe that's really good for the project uh, in the long term. In the short term, yes, there's some pain, there's some confusion. We have to do a lot of work to, um, you know, to explain what's going on, to make it clear. Um, I, I think you'll see in our messaging where we're taking every opportunity to do that, to explain that this is a fork. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I I don't know. I mean, I, I I hear where you're coming from, and I, I do think that you know overall, when we look back on this, I think this will have been a really positive thing for 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 the project or both projects. There's two long term. Okay. Um, 
A any other topics to raise? We're at the top of the hour. Anything, anything quickly? Okay, then I think we'll, uh, we'll uh, call this to a close then. Um, I will make sure the, the video gets posted. Um, we'll put uh, some summary uh, minutes up as well. And I'd like to invite uh, anyone who's watching the recording and has uh, gotten through to the end to uh, ask any questions that you might have about any of the content on Slack, on the mailing list, um, any other way you can kind of reach out to us. We, we'd love to, to answer anything we can and uh, have your input on the documents like the roadmap and, and, and things like that. Um, so, so thanks to everyone for uh, attending and uh, to those uh, listening uh, to the recording as well. Have a great rest of your Thursday. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.